recording now? Yeah. Yeah, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome aboard. Today, our P2P meeting is about the personal safety. And me and Melody as peer advisor will be present the, um, the first part of the uh, presentation to all of you. And for the second part, we I invite the officers Marine and Marky from Division of Public Safety and Security, and they're going to talk more about the information and communication. So yeah, let me introduce myself first. My name is Idro, and I also go by Carrie. Now I'm a master's student from Applied Statistics Department, and I'm originally from China. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Meng Wang. Currently, I'm the second year PhD student in School of Education, and I also come from China. Okay, so first we will talk about safety issues of traveling, such as when you ride a bus, when you ride share, and when you bike. Uh, there are two types of buses on campus. The first one is blue bus operated by U of M, and the second one, the ride, is oper operated by an Uber transportation or uh, an Uber transportation authority. So blue bus mainly uh, provides service connecting North Campus, Central Campus, Medical Center, Residence Hall, whereas the right includes the greater area of Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti. Uh, since we will focus on safety issue today, we won't talk much about bus route. And if you are interested in, you can check out the transportation presentation. Uh, one safety issue, one safety advice I may give for riding bus is that you always want to be aware of the bus schedule because it differs by routes and you don't want to wait in the dark for very long in the night. And yeah, and there might be some uncomfortable occasions that drunk people might keep talking to you. That's what I personally experienced. And so if you have ever feel like uncomfortable or unsafe, you can call, you can let the bus driver know or even call the UMPD. Uh, in terms of ride share, uh, there are Lyft and Uber on campus and it's available and, and it's much more convenient than uh, riding taxis. Taxis are available, but less common. Um, so when you write share, you always want to check the driver's profile and rates to make sure the driver is reliable. And when you travel at night, uh, just make sure you always have a friend who knows where you are. And it's always the best to have someone traveling with you. Um, bicycle. So at Upper, there are many roads that have bike lanes. So it's super convenient to bike. And when you bike, you always want to wear a helmet, yield to pedestrians, and stop at the intersections. Michigan law requires that you have a white light in the front and a red light in the rear at night. And it protects you from being hit by other cars because at night, like you may be less visible to other vehicles. And in some roads where there is no back lane, you have to share lane with vehicles and you always want to signal to the cars behind you so they can yield to you when you turn right, turn left, and when you stop. Uh, nowadays, scooters have been popular and it's everywhere on campus. Uh, if you want to use it, you can download the app Spin or Lyft. Um, there is $1 unlock fee. Also, there are some other restrictions about where you can park, so be aware of it. Uh, from my personal experience, I think scooter is less safe than bicycle because it gets really fast when you speed and you may not be able to react in time if a car comes out of the driveway or if a pedestrian comes out of nowhere. So always be slow in downtown area, stop at the intersections and yield to pedestrians. And if you are a pedestrian, you may want to stay away from scooters. Yeah, uh, Carrie will talk about walking on campus. So um, 
if you are not good at balance, if you're so if you cannot scooting or biking, walking is always a good way to you know get around campus too. So Ann Arbor is very walkable, and it will be twenty minute walk from one side of Central Campus to the other, just trying to avoid night walks. And uh, generally, Central Campus is more crowded than North Campus, so we have so many you know amazing and small shops around Central Campus, like Amden Shop. We have vintage clothes stores. We also have CVS and Walgreens if you sometimes feel really sick and want to get some medicine. And also, when sometimes you want to get your flu shot, you can, you can always check those. And also, we have really good restaurants. My favorite, one of my favorite is Cock Cat. That's a burger place. So if you really like burger, let me, please go and try it. And also, but for compared to Central Campus, North Campus will be more nature. So there are a lot of trees, there are a lot of hills up and hill down. So when you're riding a scooter or when you're walking, please make sure you look at the ground like under you and make sure you don't, you know, break your ankle or, you know, make sure you're in a safe situation. And the other thing I want to talk about is about pendling. I know as an international student, we are always told to be polite. We're always told to be nice. But when you see a stranger approaching you and ask you for money, never feel bad to say no. And also, if you are too, if you feel embarrassing or feel shy to say no, it's also okay to ignore and just walk away. Don't push yourself to give money to anyone because it's not your responsibility to help them, right? And do not tolerate a aggressive handler behavior. If you need help, always call the UMPD and they're always there for help. For another safety tip about walking during the night. So first will be always be alert and please don't wear your headphones because you need to be sensitive enough to your surroundings. You need to notice who is approaching you. You need to notice like what is happening now around you, especially at night. So make sure you're in a safe situation and also Another way you can call someone or, you know, like even pretend to call someone if you see someone is, you know, stalking you or someone is, uh, you know, approaching you. And also remember, call the police department when you are in a dangerous situation. Yeah. And I will give it back to Melody for safe ride. Yeah, uh, so... If you stay on campus until very late and there's no public transportation, you can use Safe Ride, which is a free late night transportation provided to students, faculty member, and staff of U of M. And when you use it, you can download the app or use the desktop version to submit a request. The employee will come to the location and drive you to your requested location within one mile radius of Central and North Campus. Um, yeah, and you need to present your M card when write it. And sometimes waiting time can be long, so always plan ahead. During fall and winter term, the service is available from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Yeah. And in terms of winter traveling tips, traveling in winter can be very, very challenging in Michigan. Um, if you are not, if you have never driven in the snow, it may take a while for you to be used to it. So you may want to change tires and prepare for it. Um, in terms of public transportation, buses can be very infrequent and unreliable when there is snow. And my suggestion is to order groceries online instead of really going out if you don't have a car. Um, yeah. Uh, Carrie, do you want to add something? Yes, yeah, so what I want to add on is um, if you have a car and you're driving outside, make sure you have more than half of your gas in your car, because if you get stuck, you really want to make sure the heat is always going on in your car. That's why every time when I go out in the winter, I will just go to the gas station and refill it to the full and then just go wherever I want. And I think next, let's welcome the officer Marie and Margie from Division of Public Safety and Security to give us more information about campus safety. Hi, everybody. Thank you, uh, Carrie and Mel Melody, uh, for uh, the beginning of the presentation and Jake for organizing. We appreciate it. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody to 
Ann Arbor and to the University of Michigan when you do arrive here in the fall. We're happy to have you. Um, Margie and I um, have both been police officers for 30 years. Um, we are both part of our special victims unit. And we're here just to talk to you about some safety, but also so that you can see a face and know that it's okay to call the police for help. We are here for our students. Um, Margie's having technical difficulties, so her camera is not on. Um, but both of us, um, you will have our contact information through Melody, Carrie, and Jake. If you ever need anything while you're here in Ann Arbor and at the University of Michigan, please don't hesitate to reach out. So we'll go through these slides here. And if you have any questions, um, we can put them in the chat or we can uh, wait till after. So basically, we did have some questions about DPSS and UMPD. We are the Division of Public Safety and Security, and under that division is the U of M Police Department, UMPD, and then we also have hospital security and housing security and museum security, but we all fall under UMDPSS, the Division of Public Safety and Security, so that police department falls within it, and you can see in the pictures here that there's two different uniforms. The police officers wear the dark uniforms, security officers wear the lighter color uniforms. Um, you can ask for any uniform officer for assistance. Um, we don't want you to hesitate with that, but also we want you to know that 911 is always available. Now, uh, I know a lot of times people are hesitant to call for assistance, call 911, but if you have any concerns for your safety, it's okay to call 911 and ask for assistance. And then as um, Melody and Carrie mentioned earlier, uh, the blue light emergency phones are around campus. You can always pick up one of those. Um, and then along with those ride chairs, if um, you know, you feel unsafe leaving the library and walking back to your residence hall, you can call that seven, that, no, that non-emergency number, the 734-763-1131 to ask for an escort or ride back to your residence hall um, and, and at any time. So we just want you to feel safe. So Margie had put in the chat about the DPSS app. That's the QR code um, so that you can download our DPSS public safety app. Um, it's super helpful to have. Um, we also, there's a link to our website, um, and then when you download the app, uh, you'll also, um, there's information about crime alerts and emergency alerts, and those are things that, um, if an, an emergency alert would be like a tornado warning coming, so everybody would be notified of a tornado. Um, a crime alert would be that something happened um, near or on campus that were concerned maybe for student safety, you would get notified you know, stay away from this area or be on the lookout for this person because something happened. And I'll turn it over to Margie to see if she's anything to add to the slide. Um, no, I think you covered it. Okay. So um, again, uh, we are here to present because we do not want you to be afraid to, to call us. We want you to know that it's okay. If you see something, we want you to say something. If you feel unsafe, if you feel like there's an unsafe situation, if you're concerned for someone else's safety, it's okay to call 911 or that emergency number and say, I'm on the diag and I feel like this panhandler is giving somebody a hard time. Could you have an officer come by? And you know, just because you call us doesn't mean somebody's gonna be arrested. We'll just send a uniform officer to talk to the person to say, hey, you're being a little pushy and making people feel uncomfortable and maybe we'll ask them to move along. So we really um, don't want you to hesitate to call us if you need assistance. So when you do call, um, the dispatcher is going to ask your name and your location and, and what, what happened, the nature of the incident. So we just ask that you stay on the phone if you do have something to report um, and you try your best to give your location so that the officers can meet with you. Um, and then those officers, you know, even if there's a, maybe a communication barrier with the dispatcher, once the officer gets there, we can get things straightened out. So just stay on the line, even if you feel like maybe the communication you know, isn't, isn't going well, but the, when the officer gets there, you can explain the situation and, and, and um, get some assistance. Margie? Yeah, the only thing I would add is DPSS and the police department are here to help. So if you have a problem, whether you're locked out of your apartment, your car won't start, just anything, and you don't know who to call, call DPSS. And if we aren't the right place to send you help, we will connect you to the right place so that you can get the assistance you need. And our dispatch center is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So like Margie said, even if it's not a police matter, a security matter, if you have a situation where you're unsure, you can call our dispatch and ask for assistance. Next slide. 
So traffic stops. Um, so while you're in the city of Ann Arbor or um, on U of M's campus, you could be pulled over by either the University of Michigan Police Department or the Ann Arbor Police Department, the Michigan State Police, Washtenaw County Sheriff's Department, you know, different police agencies. So um, some of the things about the rules of the road, we just want to remind you is that you always, always, always have to yield to an emergency vehicle. So whether it's an ambulance, a police car, a fire truck, you know, anything with lights making noise, you just want to pull over to the right as soon as you're able to safely pull over and stop. So that would be um, like a fire truck just wanted to pass by, but a police officer may be pulling you over. So just, we want you to, when you, you know, if you're in the middle of the intersection, you don't have to stop in the middle of the intersection. You can just as soon as you're through that intersection, pull over to the right very slowly. And then we want you to remain in your vehicle unless the officer instructs you otherwise. And the police officer is going to approach and ask for your driver's license, your registration, and your insurance. So just, um, you know, try to remain calm and wait for the officer. You know, if, you're, if your license is in the back seat, I would just wait until the officer approaches and explain my, my driver's license is in my backpack in the back seat and then reach for it then. Don't, you know, don't go digging in the back seat before the officer approaches the car. Um, Margie? Um, no, I think you covered it. Okay. One, one question came up in the chat um, from a student. Uh, it was more relevant to the, the last slide about calling like the dispatch number. Yes. Um, but what, what if a new student is not exactly sure where they are because they're so new to the university? Um, like how, what, how would you recommend that they um, tell DPSS like where they are, would things like talking about a general region or a landmark, would that yeah, be so, for you all? Yeah, I think if you're on campus, look for, you know, all of our buildings are labeled um, with the name of the building. You know, you might not know the address and that's okay if you just know that it's Angel Hall or Mason Hall, um, or if there is, you're near a parking lot, every parking lot on campus, even if it's a loading dock, has a little sign at the entrance and says lot M52 or um, SC7. So if you can read the, the, the front of the parking lot, there's a, the, um, the lot number is there and that's super helpful. If you're in the city, maybe the restaurant, maybe Hopcat, <laughs> you know, you can say I'm in front of Hopcat or at the M Den. So just giving building names, uh, business names, street names, or signs. Like I said, every loading dock, every parking lot on campus has a little sign saying which lot number it is, and that's super helpful for officers to find you. Thank you. And it's okay to stay on the line until they find you, right? You can say, well, I'm on the diag, I'm by the library, which library, you know, it's okay to try to talk through and, and help. They'll, you know, kind of walk you through and ask you some questions to try to, you know, figure out where you're at. They'll be helpful. So um, I used to do um, parent and student orientation um, over the summer. And so uh, the, my joke was always, um, I would ask people, what is the biggest crime on campus? And I, I think it's the parking. We have, a parking is terrible <laughs> on campus, but truly our, our number one crime on campus is larceny. If you leave your items unattended, they will be gone. So if you're in the library and you leave your laptop, and you run to the restroom, somebody's gonna walk by and take your laptop. So it's very inconvenient, but we ask that either you have a friend sit with your items or watch your items, or if you're alone studying, pack it up and take them with you. Because if you leave laptops, cell phone, tablets, um, your bike unlocked, uh, it may disappear. So um, we also want to um, remind everyone to register your valuables and you can do that through our DPSS app. Um, and so anything with a serial number, you can register um, your laptop, your bike, um, things like that. Margie? Yeah. And in regards to the bikes, if you have a bicycle on campus, in addition to registering it with DPSS, DPSS um, frequently has U-bolt locks that we will give away when you do register your bike. So when you get to campus, if you have a bike, call DPSS ask about registering your bike and see if you can get a U-bolt lock. Those locks are much harder for thieves to cut um, and take your bike than a regular chain lock. And that's all I had. 
So also on our website, um, as you know, you may have heard in the news around um, the country and around the world, we have active shooters. And so on our website, there's an actual a video that you can watch about active attacker. Um, and so, um, and in that video, they explain the run, hide, fight. Um, and so I think that is something that would be valuable for all of you to take the time to watch. And then it's also something when you come to campus, if maybe you're all living in a residence hall and maybe you have a group of people that would like that presentation, we can have one of our community engagement officers come and give that presentation. So um, that's the active attacker video. So that's um, worth watching. And then we have prohibited items on campus on U of M property as well as U of M housing. So weapons, including guns and knives, any knives longer than four inches are prohibited on campus. And so um, only the police may carry. A, a, a weapon. So if you do see somebody on campus with a weapon, it's okay to, you know, call 911 and say, I see somebody, you know, carrying a gun, holding a gun, pointing a gun, anything like that, please call 911. And then of course, um, you can request that training through the website. Mergy? Um, no, I think you covered it. Um, like the slide says, the probability is very low, but we know that people have a much better chance of doing the right thing if they're prepared. So we encourage you to watch the video, which will take you through each of those steps of your options of what to do if you are ever dealing with an active attacker. And the link is on our website. And I can, um, Jake or Margie, share our website link in the chat. <clears throat> oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay, next slide. So again, I mentioned earlier that Margie and I are part of our special victims unit. It's not quite as glamorous as it is on TV with Mershka Hargate, but um, about 10 years, almost 10 years ago, Margie and myself and our two other female officers, Caitlin and Paula, decided that we needed a special victims unit on campus. We were handling calls for sexual assault, stalking and domestic violence. We were handling them well, but we could we knew we could do better. So we have um, trained our officers um, that work every day, plus our special victims unit officers on trauma informed response to these types of calls. And so, um, if at any time, you know, we had mentioned that you'll have our contact information. If at any time, you know, you or a friend or a roommate or a work colleague are affected by any of these crimes, you can, you know, we of course, if it's you know, happening right then or urgent, call 911. But if you have any questions related to these topics, please don't hesitate to reach out to Margie and I. And I'll turn over to Margie. Yeah, I, I think you covered it. Um, appreciate that. There's a question here. Is there something like a witness protection program offered on campus if we report a crime? So witness protection is something that's seen uh, or talked about a lot kind of on television and television shows about crime. Um, but the reality is witness protection programs basically are only involved for the most serious felony crimes at a federal level. And that those are not things that we deal with. But in regards to reporting a crime, um, we the University Police Department does have an anonymous tip line that you can call if you want to report something without giving your name. Um, if you see something suspicious or you know about something happening and you want to be anonymous, you can call that tip line. And if you guys don't find it in a Google search here in a second, I'll find it and put it in the chat. Um, but otherwise, when you're calling to report um, something that happens, the, the dispatcher is going to ask for your name, but that doesn't obligate you to be involved in going to court and things like that. Um, it just is helping us keep our campus safe and allowing an officer to respond and deal with what's going on. Next slide, please. Okay, I will take that over now. So um, other than the personal safety, we also have some other considerations we want as students to keep in mind. So the first one will be the scams. I think the past year we received more emails and more phone calls about the scams. So it really bring the attention from us. First is what we want the student keep in mind is do not give your personal bank information or credit card information 
to anyone who call you or email you because those are the you know those are your personal information they shouldn't need that if they are legit but if they wanted to scam you that's definitely what they want right and the second is please keep in mind the national do not call registry and that which means if you if there is any you know student status if there's any visa related stuff about you definitely the school professionals or some you know staff from international center will contact you in a more legit way the national will never you know call you directly about that so other than those scams, we also have tuition scams. We all know international students, we pay a lot money for the tuition. So those tuition scams always involve to, you know, large amount of money. Make sure you never trust any platform or person other than those listed in the UM website. And as you can see, which have the underline there, we have a UM recommended payment method. So make sure you pay your tuition in those one of those methods. And Marie and Margie, do you have anything to add on for tuition scams? Um, I think you covered the tuition scam, but just scams in general. If you are contacted by phone, text, or email, and someone wants to verify your personal information, do not share any information with you. Banks, the university, the IRS, immigrations and customs, no one is ever going to call you on the phone and ask you for your personal information. So if you get a call or a contact like that, that is a red flag. Before you give any information, you can always call DPSS and we will help you walk through it and determine if it is a scam or not before you give any money. One of the other things that's happening across the country really frequently with scams is students at different schools are getting emails offering them student employment, student jobs. Hey, um, we would like to offer you a position in the physics department, please provide this information. And those end up being scams because invariably they either ask for your personal information or they ask you to pay an application fee. Those are all scams. Um, U of M does not solicit for jobs like that. So I think yeah, you're yeah, I would just agree that if you get a text message, a phone call, or an email, and if you have, if they're asking for any sort of payment, I would check with the International Center or DPSS to help you work through whether it's a legitimate request or not. And more times than not, they are scams. So never, 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 ever, ever, ever give your credit card information unless you're sure of who you're dealing with. And so, like again, you can reach out to DPSS or the International Center for Assistance. There's no urgency in responding. You can look into it and see if it's a legitimate. And then Kiri, are you guys gonna talk about the internet scams that have to do with relationships and photos or should I talk about that now? Uh, yes, I think we're going to talk about more about the employment scams, but not the relationship scam. So can you talk about that too, Margie? Thank sure. you. Yeah, another um, thing that happens a lot with university students, both international students and um, students who aren't international, is when you get to campus, you know, through different apps, you can meet people and talk to them and, you know, decide if you want to date or if you want to share pictures or whatever. It's not uncommon for someone to try and take advantage of you by um, sending you a picture of themselves, and then they ask you to send a picture of yourself. And then when you send the picture of yourself, now they try and extort you for money and say, send me money or I'm gonna post this photo. You should not, um, you know, just be wary. I'm not gonna tell you not to share pictures with people, but if you don't know them, you've never actually met them, it's probably not a good idea. And it could lead to one of these scams. And certainly if that happens to you and someone starts trying to extort you for money, we encourage you to not send the money and to call the police department and let us um, try and investigate it. Um, we wouldn't want you, you know, sometimes that can lead to a really big financial loss. Thank you, Margie. Yeah. Uh, like Margie and Carrie mentioned about an uh, employed scam. So when the semester starts, you may receive a lot of emails that uh, saying they are hiring part-time research assistant um, and provide job opportunities for students. And if you look 
look into these emails. Most of, of them are scams. Um, here are some tips to tell the real job hiring email and a scam. So first, you may want to look at the email address. If it's not from Umish, it's probably the scam. And secondly, you can check the uh, sender, like the office you receive the email. Uh, this email is from information support services. Like I've been in school for three years and I've never heard of this office. Uh, if you are not sure about it, you can always Google it. And the third is about uh, like formatting. So scam always have unprofessional formatting. And if it's from a real professor, like there will be um, a very long signature, like the contact information, the office, uh, the position of the professor, such as like director, associate professor, assistant professor of different offices. It won't be simple like this. And most important one is like the job description. So scam is always like too good to be true. And if a uh, like professor is really want to hire someone for the research, there will be an elaboration about what the research is about and what prerequisite requirement an applicant will have, such as years of experiences, software skills. And uh, yeah, so if scams always have a very vague job description <laughs> and requirement, and you can tell from this example. Yeah. And after this, I want to talk about the drug and alcohol use. So as we all know, the minimum age to consume drug and alcohol is 21. And also, please keep in mind that never buy any drug or alcohol for friends who are underage. You are not helping them. Instead, you are putting them in a really dangerous situation. And if someone reports this, you are also going to get in trouble. So make sure you don't buy or you don't buy a drug or how call for anyone else, and also say no to peer pressure. When you see something happens and you see someone is for someone else to, you know, consume drug or the alcohol, please report it to the DPSS, and they are always there for help. Um, Margie just, and Marine, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I just wanted to mention, we also have something in Michigan called medical amnesty. So if you are underage, if you're under 21, and you are consuming alcohol, and you are calling for assistance for yourself, medical assistance for yourself or someone else, you will not be charged with the crime of drinking underage if you're calling for assistance. So if somebody needs an ambulance, please do not hesitate to call 911 because you've been drinking and you're underage. You are protected by this medical amnesty law. So yes, you know, we prefer you wait till you're 21 and over to, to consume alcohol, and that is the law. But if you are calling for assistance for anyone, for yourself or anyone else, you will not be charged with a crime because you are covered by medical amnesty for, for trying to help, you know, to save someone's life potentially. So um, if anyone has any questions about that, let us know. <clears throat> Thank you, Marie. Yeah. Margie or Marie, uh, could one of you touch on the, um, the, marijuana laws in the state of Michigan versus like campus or federal laws? Yeah, so in the um, state of Michigan, there are laws that allow for possession and use of marijuana within your home. But because the University of Michigan receives federal funding, um, we are we fall under federal law um, and do not allow um, marijuana to be possessed or used on campus. Thank you. And finally, uh, we want to make a clarification that the University of Michigan is committed to a policy of equal opportunity for all persons and does not discriminate on the basis of race, color, national origin, age, marital status, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, educational programs, and admissions. Uh, and if you have um, experienced the uh, racism and discrimination, uh, these are some offices that you can report. Uh, Jake can go next slide. Yeah, and the first one is a uh, Rackham Graduate School Resolution Officer. 
The second one is Office of Conflict Resolution. If the harassment or bias incident involves another student, the third one is Office of Institutional Equity, and the fourth one is Dean of Student Office. Yeah, um, so that's all for today's presentation. Do you have any questions, concerns? You can leave the comment in the chat box. I thought of a couple things that um, to mention, if that's okay. Sure. Um, one is that um, sometimes when students are new on campus, you're meeting a lot of people and making new friends. And sometimes you can meet someone and start a friendship, and then you decide that you don't want to hang out with that person anymore. And you try and tell them to leave you alone, and they don't. Th that is something that Maureen and I help people with a lot. So if you have someone who's not respecting your boundaries, um, when you tell them you don't want to talk to them anymore, you can call DPSS and get help. Just because you call us doesn't mean that we're going to file a police report or that someone's going to be in trouble with the police. We will just help you get that person to leave you alone. Um, the other thing that comes up sometimes is sometimes um, when you're on campus, you might meet someone and as you're going through the school year, they start having a hard time with mental health and feeling stressed out and not knowing what to do. Um, all of our police officers and lots of other um, agent or um, departments on campus have specialized training in responding to mental health. So if you have a friend or someone who needs help, you can reach out to DPSS, to the Dean of Students Office, to the Counseling and Psychologic Service Office. The point of me bringing it up is that make sure if you're worried about someone that you tell someone and try and get them connected with resources. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is that DPSS has a empowerment self-defense program, which is a wonderful program to help students learn um, more about the resources that DPSS offers to keep you safe on campus, but also a bit more about um, how to walk on campus and um, just be a little more assertive and set boundaries and learn how to use your voice to, you know, as you mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, there are panhandlers sometimes who are just being polite, or sometimes there might be one that's being aggressive. And so taking the empowerment self-defense class, students tell us that's really helpful um, in them learning how to navigate campus um, and uh, you know, urban area like Ann Arbor and feel more safe. So if you're interested in taking the empowerment self-defense course, um, please look for it on our DPSS website or reach out to Maureen and I, and we will connect you with the instructor. Thank you. You're welcome. And I just put a link for the um, empowerment self-defense class in the chat box, if anyone need that. Thank you. Hello, I want to ask about the safety of bicycles. Uh, dear Maggie just mentioned that uh, we can register, register our bicycles uh, on DPSS. And uh, I, I don't under, understand if I, I don't know if I understand it correctly. And um, the office will send us a, a special lock, right? Uh, which is more, uh, which is safer than normal lo locks. Yeah, so when you get to campus, um, what I was trying to explain is that we encourage everyone to register your bike. And what happens when you register your bike is that DPSS takes the information from your bike, the make, model, serial number, your name, your contact information, so that in the event your bike gets stolen, we have that information on file so that we can try and find your bicycle and get it back for you. Um, and frequently when we are registering bicycles on campus, we are giving out U-bolt locks, which are a, you know, a sturdier lock than a chain lock. Um, I know we have some right now. I don't know how long we'll have those supplies, but when you get to campus, if you have a bicycle, please contact DPSS and ask, and we will do our best to get you a U-bolt lock, and we will certainly help you get your bike registered. Thank you. 
You're welcome. I see a question in the chat box saying, if we have a GPS tag in our vehicle and it was stolen, will the police department help us retrieve the vehicle? Because I am able to see we, my, where my vehicle is in real time. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Yeah. oops, sorry, go ahead, Margie. No, no, go ahead, Maureen. I just was gonna say, certainly if your vehicle is stolen, you can call 911 or call that non-emergency number, the 734-763-1131 explain that your vehicle has been stolen. And yes, when you meet with the officer or talk to the dispatcher, let them know that you do have that tracking device and that will be helpful. And another one, are there any particular areas in AA that are a strict no-go at night? Yeah. I wouldn't say there are any particular areas um, that are a strict no-go, but I can tell you like any other big city in the United States, and I'm guessing in a lot of parts of the world, we don't recommend that people walk alone late at night. Um, and if you have to walk alone late at night um, on campus, um, we want you to do the things that were talked about in the beginning of the presentation. Um, not No earbuds in your ears, we want you to be paying attention and looking around, um, walking from one place to the other. You can always contact DPSS and ask for an escort. Or during the school year, there are late night transportation options that are available through DPSS. And that information is on the um, DPSS um, app, as well as um, under transportation services on campus. There are a number of different um, programs that will help escort um, students or do share rides um, at nighttime so that you're not walking at night by yourself. And also another safety tip, if we are biking or using a scooter or walking alone at night, make sure you wear some, you know, bright color clothes or you have something bright color on you because, um, because I'm driving. And when I see a person in pure black clothes and when they're biking, it's so hard for me to see them. So, yeah. Absolutely. Another question came in, um, is, is a bike not a wise choice for transportation because somebody will steal it without damaging the lock? Oh, uh, so like they'll, maybe they'll steal the, steal the body of the bike, but leave the wheels. Um, is, I guess, is, is, is that a common, yeah. Yeah, many, many people use bike as transportation, bikes as transportation on campus and around town. Um, I think when you get the, the U-bolt lock, they um, will show you a good way to lock it through your tire and through the frame. Um, yeah, so I, we, I wouldn't want to discourage anybody from using a bike because it's a good mode of transportation around town. Did you have Margie or Jake? I'm sorry, I cut somebody off. No, I, I think you answered it. I, we, there are bikes that get stolen on campus, um, but I wouldn't. I would say if you have a good lock and you keep your um, bike secured, the chances are pretty minimal. And it is a good mode of transportation because parking is very difficult on and around campus. Ann Arbor is probably one of the most bicycle-friendly towns in this part of the country. There are bike lanes along the roadways in a lot of places. 
Um, so I think it's a great place to have a bicycle. You just need to make sure you keep it secured. Yeah, and just be prepared if you are if you're in North Campus because North Campus is have a lot of hill up and hill down. So if you're going to bike there, be prepared for that too. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, I will go ahead and stop recording. I, I think I just wanted to, last thoughts, remind everybody we are here as a resource. Please, please, please do not hesitate to ever call 911 if you need help immediately. If you just have a question and you're unsure of how to handle something and it's not happening right at that moment, you can always email Margie or myself um, and we can help guide you to the um, right person that can assist you. But certainly, please, um, you know, I've had to tell my own nieces and nephews and my son who are all away at college, the police are here to help you. And we don't want you to be afraid to call for assistance. Yeah, thank you so much, Marina and Margie. It's, it's really great to, to partner with you on the session and, and just, you know, make it clear that that DPSS is, is such a valuable resource for all students, but but international students as well on campus. Um, so so yeah, thanks again. We we really, really do appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you for inviting us. Yeah, thank you for having us. I hope everyone has a great day. All right. And then thank you, Carrie and Melody as well for for the presentation. So I'll stop recording.